What can you play over just one note? Consider this A to be like a white canvas ready to be painted. You are the painter. So do you want to paint something bright, colorful and positive? Or do you want to paint something sad, emotional and dramatic? Of course, you have to know where your fingers are going, but we can start simple. And trust me, even just practicing this exercise on one or two strings can make you lose track of time. I'm going to show you how it is done step by step with different scales. The note that we're going to use is the A. So the most simple thing is to use the A major scale and we can learn it on just one string, the E string. So we have A, B, C sharp, D in the E. But of course, we can also learn the G sharp, the F sharp, and the E. So on the E string, we have a bunch of notes available. We have the open string, fret 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 10, and 12. So just start playing around with these notes. I'm not doing much, but it sounds already like music. And this is what we want out of these exercises. Of course, we can do the same thing with the minor scale, for example, the A minor scale. We have it like this. We got the A, the B, the C, the D, and the E. Of course, we can also play the G natural, the F natural, and the E. So we have 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, and 12. And just start improvising with these notes. It's crazy how this drone changes as soon as we change the scale. With the major scale, everything sounds happy and bright. But with the minor scale, we really get into this sad and dark mood. Now, of course, when we move away from a one string exercise, we have way more options. However, things get a little bit more challenging since we have more notes available. So how do we do it? The first thing is to find the root note of each position. For example, if we are practicing this exercise with the A major scale, you can learn a bunch of positions. For example, the uh, root note on the third string, the note A, which is right here, will give you this shape. We have A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A. So memorize this shape, we only gonna do it on three strings. Now we can practice over this note. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. Dude, you have been playing for years. When I do it, I feel like I'm just noodling around a bunch of notes. So how do I make it sound like a melody? If you feel you are just noodling around a bunch of notes and you feel that what you're playing, it doesn't sound musical, it doesn't sound like a melody, it is probably because 
you didn't figure out yet where the good notes are. Let me tell you. In this position, we have eight notes available. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, four of these notes make up the A major chord. So we have the A, which is the root note, C sharp, which is the major third, E, which is the fifth, and A again, which is the root note. These four notes are therefore quite grounded and balanced. When we play these notes over the track, everything sounds easy, balanced, and grounded. There isn't really much going on. I'm basically just outlining the chord. Now the other four notes bring in tension. For example, the B, which is the second, D, which is the fourth, F sharp, which is the sixth, and G sharp, which is the seventh. These are the four notes that bring in a lot of tension. And so it's all about tension and release, tension and release. So you can start with some tension. For example, I can play the fourth. And we can hear that this note really wants to go somewhere, right? We can't just let it be. We can resolve to the third. And so if I play a phrase, I can beautifully resolve and finish the statement. Now let's try with the sixth, which can resolve on the fifth. The seventh, which can resolve on the root note. So, tension, 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 tension. And release. Now, this is kind of a game changer because now you know that Four of these notes will help you and the statement that you want to make. And the other four notes will help you add tension to the phrase that you are playing. Of course, we can do the same thing with the minor scale. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Now, of course, four of these notes make up the A minor chord. So we have A, which is the root note, C, which is the minor third, E, which is the fifth, and A again, which is the root note. These are quite grounded. But we also have four more notes. We have B, which is the second. We have D, which is the fourth, F, which is the sixth, and G, which is the seventh. So we can literally just learn the shape. Now I can play with the notes that make up the chord and keep it nice and balanced. But I can also add more tension to the phrase. See this F, this sixth, adds so much tension that can resolve. Now this is indeed a powerful exercise because we are not just noodling around with a shape anymore. We know which notes bring in the tension and which notes are grounded. 
so we can make better choices. We can decide which notes we want to use to create a much more powerful melody. So just a quick recap, we have one single note. We can decide to play either the major or the minor scale on one string, for example. Or the minor scale. Now we can also learn the same scale in one position. You want to memorize where the root note of each position is found. For example, if we have the root note on the third string, for the major scale we're going to end up with this shape. Now instead of just noodling around with these notes, visualize which are the notes that make up the A major chord. And which are the notes that bring in tension. Now when you have a phrase, when you create a phrase, when you start noodling around, make sure that you balance these two type of notes. And you can do the same thing with the minor scale. Of course, we can't cover all the positions, we can't cover all the scales, but this is a good starting point. So let me know if you like the lesson so that we can talk more about playing over one note. Maybe we can introduce more skills, more chords, superimposing chords, and other things that can definitely change the way you interpret your skills. Now I'm going to leave you to practice this. Take it step by step, guys, and I'll see you next time.